what happens? You wake up at 45 and you're like, what the f have I been doing with my life? Hard work is hard. Being broke is hard as well. First off, I decide what I want. Second off, I either get it or I die trying. There is no other option. I feel that one of my duties on this earth is to wake people up from the sleep that they tend to find themselves in by just doing what society tells them they're supposed to do. And I have been in the rat race for many years. And I woke up one day and was in a, I would say a mild depression, hated where I was in life. Even though I was making a bunch of money and would be deemed as successful for my age, I wasn't stoked about it. I didn't want to be there anymore. And so I made a plan to get myself free of it. So if you're out there and you feel like you no longer want to be part of the rat race, this episode is for you. Let's dive in and talk about how to actually free yourself. The first thing I want you to realize is this. If you look at somebody that's fully present, right? Let's say like a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, they are the most present people in the world. They don't worry about the future. They don't think about what might be coming up down the road. Obviously they don't have bills to pay and all that stuff. But a one, two, three, maybe four-year-old, they are the most present people on this planet. But at one time, something has to happen in order for them to be thrown into being, I guess you could call it, I don't want to say even awoken. They're actually put to sleep in the fact that they are thrown into this dream of what we're supposed to do in society. And at some point in time, a carrot is introduced, as you could say a hypothetical carrot of, okay, you get into kindergarten and now you've got to be a good boy, be a good girl, make sure you get some grades so you can get into first grade. And so you have this carrot that's now presented. So if you know the story of the carrot between the donkey, either you, either they're motivated by the stick, which is hitting them with the stick, or they're motivated by the carrot that's right in front of their face. So we're presented a carrot to kind of get us out of being present. And now we've got to stop thinking about this very moment that we're in and we've got to start thinking about, oh, first grade. I've got to get good grades now so that I can get this thing later on down the road. And then in first grade, you've got to be a good boy and a good girl, and you've got to start taking some tests. And you've got to get better than everybody else so that you can get into second grade. And you want to be first in your class in third grade, so you've got to do better than everybody. And it's this, this constant, there's something else in front of me. Then after you get out of elementary school, then you got to get into middle school. When you're in middle school, that's when it starts ramping up, right? But you got to do good in sixth grade and to get into seventh grade and seventh grade to get into eighth grade. And it's a constant carrot that's put in front of us. And then when you're in middle school, you better do really well so you can get into high school. And you want to make sure you get into high school. And then when you're in high school, every single nine, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, you better do really good so you can get into college. And you got to do really good so you can get into a good college, right? Are you seeing this, this carrot that's constantly dangled in front of us at one point in time? We have these fully present humans that are taken out of the present moment and told to focus on something in the future, right? So then you get into college and you get into a good college because you did really well because you were a good boy or good girl. Then you better do really well in college. Why? Because you want to get that dream job. And then when you get out of school and you get that quote unquote dream job, then you better do really well so you can climb the corporate ladder so you can finally have that uh, income that you want. And then what happens? You wake up at 45 and you're like, what the f have I been doing with my life? I don't want any of this. And I'm stressed and I don't like where I am and I feel stuck. That's why there's something called a midlife crisis. Many people have midlife crisis because they wake up at some point in time and realize what the hell have I been doing? Like this carrot that I've been following I didn't even know it was in front of me. I didn't even know that's what I needed to do. I didn't even know that's what I was following. I was being told what to do at all points in time. I've got to get ahead. I've got to climb the ladder. I've got to get ahead. I've got to climb the ladder. I've got to get ahead. I've got to climb the ladder. And people wake up and they're like, this isn't what I want. But the problem is we've been sold a lie. You've been sold a lie. I've been sold a lie. We've all been sold a lie. And the lie is, you know, you're supposed to work so that you can get something in a present or to, to get out of this present moment so that we can possibly have a better future. And then you get to that future and now you have another future you've got to work for. Then you get to that future and then you have another future that you have to work for. No wonder why people are so stressed is because they can't enjoy this one present moment where nothing is wrong. 
Everything is beautiful. Everything is amazing. The present moment that we're all in, no matter what life circumstances you're stuck in right now, everything is beautiful right now, but we're told it's not good enough because there is a potential better future that we always have to be working for. And so we're, people are stressed and they're anxious and they're depressed because they're constantly thinking about how this moment sucks compared to what the next moment could be or what I could have or the car or the job or the family. And then what happens is people wake up and then the issue is they can't get out of it, they don't think. They feel like they're stuck. They end up getting married. They end up getting a mortgage. They end up having a couple kids. They've got cars they've got to pay for. They've got car insurance they've got to pay for. They've got bills. They've got everything that has to be, the lights, the electricity, the air conditioning, the, the, the water in the house, everything has to be paid for. And they feel stuck. Like they've literally dug themselves into a hole that they don't know how to get out of. No wonder why people are so stressed is because they're stuck in a reality that they do not want. Yeah, that sounds like it sucks. So what do you do? Well, and with the feeling of being stuck, the, the way I like to, to talk about the rat race, Kevin O'Leary, the guy from the Shark Tank, they call him Mr. Wonderful, and he calls himself Mr. Wonderful in the Shark Tank. A quote that I love, he says, salary is a drug that they give you to forget your dreams. Mm. It's a good one, right? Your salary is a drug that's given to you to forget your dreams, to forget about what it is that you truly want to do. But the beautiful thing about it is that no matter where you are, no matter how stuck you are or how stuck you might feel like you are is a better way of putting it, you can always pull yourself out of it. You can always remove yourself from the rat race at any point in time if that's what you want to do. Or you can stay in the rat race, but get a job that you actually enjoy. Maybe it pays a little bit less. Would it be better to love your life versus hating your life and make a $10,000 less a year? I don't know. I would think that it probably would be. So if, you're, if you feel like you're stuck, realize you're not stuck. You're not a tree. You can always make a move. Now, what stresses people out is they think that, oh my gosh, I'm in this job. I've come to realize that I don't want to be here. I need to get out as soon as possible. And they think they need to get out in like a week or two weeks or a month. And in reality, if you have a family, if you have kids, if you have bills to pay, you're not going to be able to leave most of the time in the next week or two. And so what I always recommend to people, if you want to remove yourself from this bullshit rat race that we're sold into as if we're that's what's going to truly make us happy is to come up with a transition plan try to figure out how you can get out of the position that you're in in the next two to three years now automatically if i say that to you guys those of you guys who are thinking oh my gosh i leave i gotta leave gotta leave do you feel a little bit more oh, okay i don't think i could do it in the next month but i think that i could figure out a way to get it done in the next two years yeah you definitely can. You come up with a transition plan. That's why people are always stressed because they can't stop moving. They can't stop moving. And they think, oh my gosh, I've got to, I've got to move immediately. I've got to get out of this immediately because we've been sold that, that idea of a better future coming to us later on down the road. And then we get to that quote unquote better future that we are waiting for. And you're like, this future isn't great. This isn't the future that I wanted. Now I'm stuck here, right? So if you look ahead to your future and say, okay, if I were to remove myself, from the rat race in two years from today, how would I do it? And you start coming up with a plan. And I've done this with many of my old one-on-one -on -one clients. When I used to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore because I don't have the time to, I coach in groups. When I used to do one-on-one -on -one coaching is I would work with people who literally had jobs. They were stuck in corporate America. They were making 80, 100, $150,000 a year. Good money, $60,000 a year sometimes. And the idea was how do we build you a business outside of that business or outside of your current job that you can start growing over the next two years because all you really need to do to leave is to be able to first cover your your bills so then what you gotta think of is how much are my bills how much are my bills that i can't move that i know i've definitely got is it two thousand a month is it three thousand a month four thousand whatever it is that's the number i've got to get to and be able to cover and able to in order to be able to leave because then when i leave and i get 40 or 50 hours of my life back that's when my business can really start to explode you have to realize that you can't enjoy a future moment presently if you can't learn to enjoy this present moment right now so if you're constantly thinking oh my gosh i've got to uh, I've got to do this. I've got to get the new job. I've got to create another business. First off, before you ever make any changes, any transition plans, all of that stuff, what you have to do, absolutely have to do, is learn to appreciate and love and be grateful in this present moment because that's what's really going to help you. So don't think, oh my gosh, I hate my job. I've got to you know, figure it out over the next two years. And then you go into your job the next two years because you haven't transitioned yet and you hate every single moment of it. No, you can still be grateful. You can be grateful for a job that you hate might take a little bit of work, but it's possible. Oh my gosh, what can you be grateful for? I'm able to, you know, pay, feed my children. I'm able to put 
clothes on their back. I'm able to have a car that I enjoy. Whatever it is, there's ways to be grateful in every single thing that you do. So be grateful while you are transitioning out of this current position, which is important. If you're thinking about, you know, maybe I should leave, maybe I shouldn't, I'm not really sure what I should do. What I wanna ask you is this, if you were to fast forward 10 years, if you were to stay where you currently are, maybe get a promotion or two and fast forward 10 years, 10 years from today, is that where you want to be? Just think about that for a second. For me, when I decided to leave corporate, I was just sick of working for someone else and I wasn't passionate about what I did. I made great money, but it was just like, it was soul sucking to me is the way I felt. I was thinking, okay, if I fast forward 10 years from today, I'd probably be making 250, $300,000 a year. I'd probably have a nice house. I'd probably have a nice office. I'd be spending 50, 60 hours of my life under fluorescent lights in a button down shirt when I don't even like dressing up. And I started looking at it and I was like, me in the corporate world, if I'm, you know, 45 years old in a leather chair, wearing a button down, telling people what to do and spending 60 hours under fluorescent lights, making a couple hundred grand a year, that's, it doesn't sound exciting to me. I'm not like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a hell yeah for me. And I always say in life, if it's not a f yes, it's automatically a f no. So if my 10 years from today, fast forward, if you're 10 years from today in whatever job you have, if you fast forward and put 10 years into work and see where you are, if it's not a f yes for you, it's a f no. That means that you need to get out of it and try to figure out some way to move. So let's talk about how to escape this rat race that we're talking about. If you're being woken up, if you're sitting there going, yeah, this is definitely resonating. I definitely feel this. What's next? If you don't want to be there, you want to think about what you want to be doing. It's okay to move to another job. Like you don't have to run a million dollar business. So if you're out there, you can switch from one job that you don't enjoy to one job that you do enjoy. Maybe it pays you the same, maybe it pays you less, maybe it pays you more. I don't know what it is. But I would rather you go and spend the majority of your waking hours, which is what we do. Working is the, the thing that we do the majority of waking hours. I'd rather you enjoy the majority of your waking hours versus not enjoy the majority of your waking hours and not torture yourself to go there. As I said, I recommend creating a two-year transition plan, right? If you fast forward two years, what do, we, what do you want to be doing? How do you want to be doing it? How much money do you want to be making? All of that stuff. So step number one, I'm gonna give you four different steps, okay? Step number one is you have to decide what it is that you actually want. So a lot of times people don't know what they want, but they know what they don't want and they don't want to be where they currently are. They don't want to stay in this position. They don't wanna be in this position 10 years from today. So number one is you gotta decide what it is that you want. If you don't know what it is that you want, the first question is how do you want to feel? So when you wake up and you're about to go to work, whatever that work is, either working for someone else or working for yourself, how do you want to feel? That's the first place to start. Do you wanna feel free? Do you wanna feel happy? Do you wanna be excited to wake up? Do you wanna be grateful? Make a list of everything that you want to feel when you wake up in the morning five years from today. How do you wanna feel? Start there and then you start asking yourself, what makes me feel that way? How could I create a job or move into a job that would make me feel that way? You know, I'd much rather you work, uh, if you're making 60 grand a year right now, and you're working as an accountant and you don't want to be there in 10 years. I'd much rather you work, you know, if you if you love plants, to work at a plant store, you know, working full-time hourly and make 40, 45 grand a year. Because at least you're going to be happier. And here's the, th the crazy thing about it. I'm going to talk about downgrading if it's necessary. Sure, you can downgrade if necessary. But what's really crazy is that once you actually step into this flow of doing what it is that you want, it's kind of like the universe comes on your side and you start making more money. But let's just say that that doesn't happen. You start making less. Wouldn't it be better for your children to see a parent that's not exhausted every single time they come home, that doesn't have a short temper every single time they come home because they've been pushed around at this job as an accountant that they don't want to be anymore and they can see something that they love doing? Would it be better for your children to be around that? I would say so. It's not worth an extra $10,000 a year, plus take you know 30% out of it for taxes, $7,000 a year, just to be able to you know buy a couple extra pair of shoes every single year, or drive a little bit nicer car. So think about that. You know, Decide what it is that you want, decide how you want to feel, and then start to figure out what it is that would make you feel that way. So that's step number one. Step number two is to get on the old powerful Google and start actually researching some stuff of how to make money. The way that I learned how to make money online is literally becoming obsessed by, about how to make money online. 
I went online, I started Googling it. I went into YouTube, I went to conferences. I started going to networking events. I started going to meetups just to meet people that are like that. But it all came because first off, I started on Google and said, what is it that I want to figure out? I, I know how I want to feel. I don't know how I'm going to feel this way. Let me go ahead and Google it. And so what you do is you Google it and then you just try some of those things. Try new things. See what it is that you're, you want to do. That's step number two. Step number three is to connect with other people in that industry. So if you decide that you want to be in the plant industry, like I'm just saying, how can you go to other conferences? I'm sure there's plant conferences. I guarantee that if you Google plant conferences, United States 2022 or 2021, you're going to come up with some. There's conferences for literally everything. So start connecting with other people. Are there networking groups in your area? Are there places you can go to, stores you can go to? Are there you know, nurseries for plants that you can go to and actually see what they're doing around there? Just start being around other people who are in that industry. It makes transitioning into that industry a lot easier when you start to know people. So conferences, YouTube, Google, networking events, meetups, stores, whatever it is that you wanna do, figure it out. That's step number three, connect with other people in the industry. Step number four, start making a plan. All right, now I've decided how I wanna feel. I've decided what I wanna do. I've come up with a little bit of plan on how to do it. I've met some people who are doing it. Now I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna write myself a detailed plan of the date that I'm going to be leaving my job. This is what I had every one of my clients do when they used to do this with them. I need a definite date you're leaving that job. No matter what shit hits the fan, you get hit by a truck, you're leaving August, 14th, 2023, whatever it is for you. What is the date that you're going to be leaving? And now that you figured out a date, start figuring out a plan. Okay. You know, on the weekends, I'm going to do this three times a week. I'm going to do this. And you start coming up with a plan to actually start transitioning. I need to make $4,000 a month in order to be able to cover my bills. And so this is how I'm going to come up with $4,000 a month and start coming up with a plan. Cause then when you see this plan, you realize it's not as hard as you thought it was because when it's in your head, the, the thinking and the plan is in your head, it's very abstract. It's hard to come up with the exact way to do it. But when you write it down, you can see it on paper and you come up with a plan, you go, you know what? I can do this and I'm going to do this. So ultimately, those are the four steps to remove yourself from the rat race. I want you to realize this. Don't live your life. If you're currently in this position where you this this episode woke you up in some sort of way, I've had so many people, I mean, so many people message me and tell me that I've, I've told them, you know, I helped them quit their job in some sort of way. I never met them, but somehow I quit them, helped them quit their job in some sort of way. I've helped so many people do this. Don't live the rest of your life working for someone that you don't want to work for, doing something that you don't want to do. You spend the majority of your waking hours doing that. Start coming up with a plan and start extracting yourself from the rat race. And this is a four-step plan of how to do it. Yesterday, I read a quote that hit me really hard. And the quote was, some people will go broke for their kids, but they won't get rich for them. I was like, damn, that one hits hard. And the reason why is because I've coached thousands of parents. And uh, one thing that I noticed with them, actually, there's quite a few things that I noticed with them. But this hits so hard because a lot of parents, I feel, are actually like this. And I'm going to go over the different, you know, the different aspects of this that really hit home with me. There's a couple different aspects. But even if you don't have kids right now, this still is going to help you because we're going to go over some deep psychological things in today's podcast. So there's a couple of reasons why it hit me so hard. Number one, so many people are locked into their job because they fear not being able to provide for their family. Right? So they don't get the full financial success they possibly could. And so they're, they're staying broke because they're afraid that if they lost their job or if they weren't able to provide for their family, then you know, it would hit the fan. And so that's the first thing that, that hits home with me. The second thing is that some people love their children so much, they'll spend their last dollar to get them whatever they want. And the third reason why is because people don't realize what their children are missing out on by simply them not living up to their true potential. I'm not talking about your kids living up to your true potential. I'm talking about you living up to your true potential. So we're gonna go through every one of these. And here's the thing that I'll say. I've never met a parent that doesn't want their children's life to be better than theirs was, ever, not once. You know, parents, the most giving time I ever see somebody in their life is when they're talking about their kids, when they're working with their kids, when they're trying to help their kids in some sort of way. So everybody, first off, the way I wanna start, wants their children's lives to be better than them. But one thing that really holds a lot of people back is they think, I wanna make a lot of money, and in order to make a lot of money, I'm gonna to have to put a lot of time into it. And time equals money to them. More money equals more time. 
more time in my business means less time with my children. And nothing can be further from the truth. Now, for some of you guys, you're like, that's, that's so foreign to me. I don't even, it's not even, I'm not even comprehending that right now, but we'll dive into that as I go through it. It's not true that more money means less time with your children. That's the first hang up. Some of you guys that are parents are out there. I'm completely shifting up the foundation of your life in your, in your mindsets. Cause you think, hold on. But if I want to make more money, I have to have less time with my children. And one of the main reasons why you're not succeeding in what it is that you want to succeed in is because you think that in order to make more money, you're going to spend less time with your kids. And if you spend less time with your kids, you're not going to be able to raise them the way that you want. And so you're like, you know what? I'll make less money because I love my children that much. When in reality, it might be a better thing for you to make more money because that would actually help your children out more. And I'll tell you why we're going to dive into it. But, but basically what it comes down to is a poverty mindset. I can tell you this because I've worked through my own poverty mindset and still to this day, continue to work at this poverty mindset because it took 25, 30 years to build this poverty mindset in my head. So now I'm working to try to unravel it. And, uh, time does not equal money. Money does not equal time. I'm going to say that first off. So first thing we're going to dive into is more money does not equal less time with your kids. And if you set up your business, if you want to set up a business or if you have a business and you think, okay, if in order for me to have more money, I need to work more. You can do that. If you want, you can set your business up that way, or you don't have to, that's completely up to you. More money does not equal more time. You know, if you own a business, more money, if you're smart means hire more people, hire more people means more free time or more time to work on the things that you want to. So whether you have children and you start a successful business and it starts to get more successful, you can bring people on to then do more of your work for you, which means more money equals more people, which actually means more free time. That's foreign for a lot of people. I definitely understand that. You know, for me in my business, we have 12 employees in my business. I can literally go and do all of my employees work every single day, but I would have absolutely no time to sleep. Who wants that life? I would be working 24 hours a day, every single day. The point of hiring people and hiring amazing people is so that they come in and help you. They, they're really good at what they do. And they have their own part of the business that they basically in their mind own in your business, which allows you to take time to do what you truly want to do to whether that's free time with your kids or whether that's, I don't have any kids. And I just want to really focus on, you know, for me, I don't have any kids, but what I really want to focus on is just coaching people. You know, I have a bunch of different coaching courses and, and that's what I want to take my time doing or creating content like I'm doing right now, creating a video for YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, which is also going to be a podcast episode. So for me, it's one of two things that I want to spend my time doing. And the reason why I hire people, because I want to create content and I want to coach people. If you have the kids, maybe you just want to spend more time with your kids. So when your business is more successful, it actually means more time with your kids. And so, you know, I work probably 40, 50 hours on average per week, but I've worked 110 hours before in old businesses and run them into the ground. But I work about 40, 50 hours a week now, and our business is doing multiple seven figures because we have incredible people in place that allow that to happen. I hire them because they get to stay in their zone of genius. They're incredible what they do. And then I get to stay in my zone of genius, which is coaching and creating content. And everybody does what they're really good at. So more time or more money does not have to equal more time in your business. The first thing that I wanted to dive into around that is so many people are locked into their job mentally because they fear not being able to provide for their family. I'm gonna let that one sink in because I know a lot of people listening to this are not doing what you truly want to do because you are afraid you won't be able to pay their bills. I, and I get it. I completely understand where you're coming from. I understand that fear. People work jobs that they hate for their families. But who said that has to be that way? Even if you don't start your own business, what if you just had a job that you loved and you still were able to provide for your family? What would that look like? For some people, that idea is so foreign because they've hated their job for so long and they just feel like that's the way that it is. And it's a novel idea and it's, it's super selfless to do something that you hate doing every single day in order to do it for somebody else, to provide for people. But who says that it has to be that way? What if you loved what you did and you still provided for your children? 
whether that's your own business or whether that's working for somebody else. What would that look like? Is that a paradigm shift for you? Is that hard for you to even accept because you've always thought that you have to hate your job? Maybe you saw your parents hate their job in order to provide for you. And so now you're working a job that you hate in order to provide for your children. What would it look like for you to work a job that you absolutely love? What would that look like? Let's say you make $60,000 a year now working a job that you hate. What if you got a job that paid you $50,000 a year, but you loved it? What would that look like? You know, it's an extra $10,000 difference in income. I understand that, but could you still live off of the income if you made 10,000 less? Maybe. And if you did, would you show up at home a better person if you loved your job than if you hated your job? Would you show up a better person for your kids, a better father, better mother for your children if you loved your job and didn't hate it? Or at least enjoyed it? Maybe not even love it. If you just enjoyed it instead of hating it, what would that be like? You know, so many, we live in this society and we see people that are preaching hustle and pre preaching the struggle. You gotta hustle, you gotta struggle, you gotta hustle, you gotta struggle. That sounds terrible. Who wants to succeed by struggling your way to success? That sounds like it sucks. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna do that. But we think that that's what it takes because that's all we see people talking about. People love to brag about the hustle. They love to brag about the struggle. You gotta work your ass off. Sure, you definitely have to work hard. I won't say that you don't have to work hard, but it doesn't mean that you can't also have time with your family. Successful business does not mean no time for family. That's something that you have to realize. It sounds terrible. Most successful people, this is a funny thing, we look at it and we think, oh my gosh, in order to, to grow a successful business, I have to basically hate my life every single day. No, you don't. Most people who are successful love what they do. And the reason why they're so successful is because they love what they do and they don't mind doing it. And so they sometimes accidentally work a little bit harder and maybe they do go out of balance and work 80 hours a week for a month. And then they go way out of balance the other way. And then they go down to 30 hours a week because they work so hard for that month, but they love what they do. So they don't see any difference between them. It's literally like their business is a part of them. It's like their arm. You know, what would it look like for you to love what you do? That's what I want you to think of. What if you could make money doing something that you love? I want you to think about that because for some people, that idea is so foreign. It's something I want you to ponder on. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. The next thing is some people will spend their last dollar for their children, which is also a beautiful thing. It's a novel idea. But what if you didn't have to spend your last dollar? What if you didn't have to spend your last? What if you had enough money to buy your children what they wanted? What would it be like for your children to say, dad, I want this. And you went, okay, no questions asked. Don't even have to ask how much it is. What would it be like for your children to say, mom, I want this new PlayStation. I don't even know what number PlayStation, five, seven, six, 12. I don't know what PlayStation number one. Mom, I want PlayStation 12. And you're like, all right, go buy it. Not how much does it cost? What would it look like for you to just be like, okay, we're gonna go get it. What would that feel like to know that you built a life to say, F it, let's go get it. How different would that make you feel? How would you feel about yourself? How would you feel about your family? How would you feel about your own success if you were the person that created that? You don't have to have an answer. I'm just asking these questions to try to shift up the foundation for what you actually think is real. Because believe me, I lived in a poverty mindset for a really long time. The idea of go ahead and get it was foreign to me for the longest time. What if you could live your life going, all right, son, go ahead and get it. All right, daughter, go ahead and get it. I don't even care how much it is. You know, maybe they turn 16 years old and you're like, I'm going to buy them a car. What would that feel like? Not, oh my gosh, they're about to turn 16. I don't know how I'm going to afford a car. What if it was just like, okay, go ahead and get it. What would that feel like? Can you lock your brain into that feeling and go, I want that feeling in real life. I want to know what that feeling feels like. What would that look like for you? What would it look like for your kids to say that they wanted something and you said, let's go get it. That's all I want you to think about. Instead of having a struggle and just pay the bills and just get by, what would it look like on the other side of that to think I could get my kids whatever it is that they want? Just something to dive into that I want you to kind of think about. And then the next thing is people don't realize what their children are missing out on 
by them not making more money. Here's a big thing. People have children that, they, and once again, the work jobs that they hate in order to provide for a family, and that is freaking selfless and amazing. But what if you were able to make even more money and be able to provide for your family at a really high level, and then you could travel to wherever you want to? What would your children's life look like if you could travel anywhere in the world? I remember the, when I was a kid, I remember being in like third grade. Third grade was the very first time that I ever saw a picture of the Colosseum in Rome. And I remember reading about it and learning about it and being like, that's incredible. That thing is 2000 years. And I was blown away. And I was like, if I could just go see that thing one time in my life, it would be amazing. And all I wanted to do was see the Colosseum. Imagine if your children felt the same way and you went, yeah, let's go ahead and hop on a plane next week and we're going to go to Rome and see it. What would that be like for your children? To not look at it in a book, to not see it on the TV, but to go and experience it, to experience Italy, to experience Rome, to experience the food, to experience the people, to hear the languages, to see all the different types of people that go to that place. How much more rich would their life be? I'm not talking rich in money, rich in experiences. Would their life be if you could do that for them? Just sit on that for a little while. Just think about it. Think about what that would be like. It's possible. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. You just have to make it possible. Think about what the travel would be like. Think about what the safety could be like, right? If you don't have much money right now, you might not live in the best part of town. How much more safe could your children be if you were in a better part of town? I remember I had a coaching client not too long ago and we were speaking and his biggest fear was that his son would be shot by the time he was 13 years old because he lived in such a bad part of town. His main job was to get, his main goal in life was to make $100,000 so he could put a down payment on a house outside of where they lived because he wanted his son to be in a safer place. What would your children's life be like if you could provide them more safety? Think about that for a second. And then another thing, what would it be like if you could afford to send them to any school? What would their, how much different would their life be if you could send them to any school? Maybe you want to send them to a private school instead of a public school. Maybe you want to send, you know, move to a different part of town that's a better part of town that has better schools so they can get a better education. How much different would their lives be if you made more money so you could provide them a better education? How much better would their lives be if you fast forward 20 years, if you worked really hard right now and they were able to get a better education? What if they get into college and it doesn't matter what college it is, you just say, you're going. You got in, you're going. Don't care how much it is. What would that life look like for you? I understand it might be foreign for you right now, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. It's 100% possible, but you have to be the person to first believe it and then actually make it possible. That's the thing about creating stuff in your life. So think about how much richer your children's life would be. And I get it. I get it. I get it. You've got to provide. But what if you were to not quit your job today and go do something, but if you were to slowly transition over the next year or two years into what it is that you truly want to do, what it is that you're truly passionate about? What would their life look like? How much more rich would their life be and experience if you could travel where you wanted to go, if you could move to the part of town and put them in the school that you wanted to, if you could say yes to any college that they wanted to go to, how much different would their life be if you fast forward? You know, if you, if you were to go in this present moment right now and you were to work your ass off and work hard for a year, and maybe go a little bit out of balance. And working hard for a year then sets up the foundation of whatever it is you need to set up, which then allows you to give you more free time throughout the rest of your life with your children. But it also provides more income for you in some sort of way, which then allows you to be able to travel with your children where you want to, to be able to buy the house that you want, to be able to buy them the car that you want to buy them, to be able to put them in the school that you want to put them in, to be able to pay for whatever college it is. If you were to fast forward 20 years from now, what would you putting in the work and doing what you want to do do for your children's lives? I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about over the next 20 years. What would that look like? I understand you might be locked in a job right now, but what if you were to make a two-year plan to transition out of it and to start building your e-commerce business, start building your Amazon business, start building your coaching business, start building your real estate business, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be right now, but what if you were to be able to transition and have, I'm gonna have my two-year plan, I'm gonna have my three-year plan to transition out of this to finally give my children and my family the life that they want. Think about that. Because you either sacrifice now or you sacrifice later. What sacrifice do you want? There's two types of hard. 
right? Like hard work to be successful. Sometimes it does require some hard work, a little bit out of balance every once in a while. You could either be, you know, working hard and put the hard work in there. Hard work is hard. Being broke is hard as well. But you are the person who gets to choose which hard that it is that you want to choose. Either it's hard work or it happens to be the hard feeling of being broke. Because some people go broke for their kids, but they won't get rich for them. What would your life look like if you decided to get rich for your kids? My number one key to success is not sexy at all. And it's probably quite unexpected. I don't really hear a lot of people talking about this. So, um, and in reality, it might kind of surprise you a little bit. My number one key to success, here it is, is patience. That's my number one key to success. And I'm going to explain patience, how to be more patient, but I'm also going to give you some more steps after the patience and leading up to the patience that will help you succeed as well. So there's a few keys, there's a few action items, and there's a few mindset shifts that need to be made in order to take your patience, actualize it, and create the success that you want to in your life. So when we talk about success, you have to look at the world that we live in first, right? First off, before we even do that, let's talk about what does success mean to you, right? What success means to you might be completely different, actually is probably different than every other person that's listening to this podcast. Hundreds of thousands of different reasons why you want to be successful and what success means to you. To someone out there, success might mean $10 million net worth. To some of you out there, it might mean a house on the beach. To some of you guys out there, it might mean a happy family. To some of you guys out there, it might be no more anxiety. Some of you guys out there might be buying your mom a house. Whatever success means to you, you have to realize that we live in a world of immediate gratification. If I want food, I can get food delivered to my house in the next 30 minutes. If I want groceries, I can get groceries delivered to my house in the next couple hours. If I want to go somewhere, I can have someone come pick me up and drive me that I've never met before. If I want to know something, I can Google and I can immediately get knowledge. We live in a world where everything is immediate except for success. Success is not immediate. Success takes time. And a lot of times we think that it's very quick because what happens is people just kind of pop up sometimes. And you're like, man, Elon Musk, for instance, he's so successful. He just like came out of nowhere one day. And that's the way that we see it. Oh, this actor is massively successful. We look at this musician. Oh my gosh, she's so massively successful. She just came out of nowhere. How did she become so successful so fast? What we don't see is we don't see the 10, to 15 years of hard work and knowledge and skill building that they have to put in in order to get to where they want to go. Very rarely does somebody decide they want to do something and then a month later, they're this massive success. It's like you don't just plant a seed in the ground and expect that tomorrow it's going to be a massive tree. You know it's going to take time. So what if you were to treat your life, treat your goals and treat your success the same way that you would if you were just waiting for a tree to grow. We just planted trees in my house. These little tiny, little teeny tiny trees are about a foot tall, right? And they're supposed to grow to 80 feet, but we got them because of the fact that they just will make a border around my house because for my house, there's just, there's nothing out. There's just nature that goes off my property, right? So we wanted a little bit of privacy trees. So I planted these little one foot trees and they've been there for about four months now and they've barely grown but I'm not trying to rush them to grow because I understand that it's not gonna go from one foot to 80 feet tall in, I don't know, a couple days. I'm not gonna be like, oh, it's been four months. What the hell's going on with these trees? I think these trees are broken. I know that it's going to take time. So when we see someone that's a massive success, it looks like it's a meteoric rise, but in reality, it was a really slow burn for them to get to where they are. For me, I don't know if it's just because I'm more of a laid back person. I don't know if it's because I was raised fishing and I'm used to being patient. I'm okay with just waiting around and doing what needs to be done until eventually I get to the point where I want to go. And as I get older, you know, I'm 35 now. I started really working on myself and building my first business when I was 19 years old. So it's been 16 years and it's cool because I can see all of the little micro decisions that I made when I was 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 years old all these little tiny decisions that got me to where I am now. But had I not made those decisions and not stayed on the path that I was on, I wouldn't be where I am. 
And I think it's that way for everybody. And so one of the biggest things that you can learn along your path of success is just to simply be patient. You can have the world, you just can't have it all at once. You've got to work towards it. You know, and when you see people that are patient and just continue to go on the path and go on the path and go on the path, put their head down and work and put their head down and work and put their head down and work, eventually, you just have this feeling that they're going to get there. Because if you can be patient, if you can decide what you want and be patient, you're going to get what you want. And that's the first thing that I want to bring in. Before you have to be patient, you have to decide what it is that you want. Like when you look at your life 10 years from now, what do you want? What is the life that you actually want? Because if I'm going to go and I'm going to drive somewhere, before I get in my car, I've got to know where I want to go, right? Otherwise, I'm just going to be driving around up and down random streets. So many people out there live their lives just like they're just driving a car around and just taking random turns and random turn here and random turn here. They don't know where they're going. And too many people live their lives as if they're just wandering. They don't have any idea of what it is that they actually want. So before you decide anything else, before you can be patient, you can't just be patient and just think that life is going to come to you. You have to decide what it is that you want. So what do you want? Okay. Once you've decided what you want, what you have to do is you have to get rid of all other options. This is something I remember when I started a business with my best friend, Dean, years ago, we started an Amazon business and one of our friends, JJ, asked a question. He said, Hey, why are you guys going into business with each other? Like you could do this on your own, all this stuff. And Dean's phrase was, Rob's the most resilient person that I know. He's basically like a cockroach. Like when he decides he's going to do it, he's just going to do it. There are no other options. And that's the way I've always lived my life is that first off, I decide what I want. Second off, I either get it or I die trying. There is no other option. And if you've listened to my episode a couple months ago on manifestation, I talk about this. When I decide what it is that I want, the opposite of what I want doesn't exist in my reality. So I can't even think to myself, oh, well, what if this doesn't work? Because the only thing that exists in my head is this is the only thing. So you've got to learn to burn the ships. You know, there's, a, there's that story of whether it's true or not. You know, there's debate on whether it's true or not, but whether or not it's true doesn't even matter. What matters is the story behind it of the Spanish conqueror was coming across. And you could tell that while he was coming across hundreds of years ago, he could notice his, his, his men weren't really in it. They were kind of uh, thinking about turning back. And so when they landed, they were in wooden boats. When they landed in the Americas, he said, all right, everybody, we're going to burn the ships. He's like, they're all like, wait, what do you mean? What are we going to burn the ships? He goes, we're going to burn the ships because you're not turning back. Either we succeed in this conquest or we all die here trying. That's the way that you've got to be with the life that you want. You've got to decide what it is that you want and all other options are off the table. There is no other plan B. It's like Will Smith says, there is no plan B because it distracts from plan A. There should only be a plan A. You have to make up your mind. You have to say, this is what I want. There is no other option. It's like the Eminem quote, right? Success is my only mother option, failure is not. That's the way that it's gotta be in your head. There is nothing else. You've gotta go for it. This is it, nothing else. Either I get it or I die trying. That's the mindset, boom, okay. Now that I know what I want, now that I've made that mindset up of I am going to get it no matter what, this is where most people usually stop. They don't go much further because then they go, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm excited about this. I'm going to go. And then they, they go all in and they put all of their hard work into building a brand new business. And then three months later, that business is barely doing anything. And they're like, man, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I, you know, I'm putting in three months of hard work and nothing's happened. We've barely made any money. In fact, we've lost money over the past three months. Maybe I'm just on the wrong path. Ah, I know what it is. I'll switch to another path. I'll figure out that other path that I should go down in order to be successful because clearly this is the wrong one. And then what they do is they go on that other path and they're all in on that other path. Yes, we're going to do it. We're going to burn the ships. And then it doesn't work out for three to six months. Like, damn it, this must not be the right path either. No, it's not that you aren't on the right path. Is this that you have to stop stopping. As long as you just don't stop, you'll eventually get to where you want to be. I remember years ago, I was watching a, an interview with Jared Leto. Jared Leto is a uh, super successful actor, and he's also a super successful musician. So he is in two different fields that many, millions of people want to be successful. Millions of people want to be some of the best actors in the world. Millions of people want to be one of the biggest bands in the world. He's both. Well, 
he was uh, in an interview and the lady was asking him, said, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think is your success? Like, why is it that you're so successful? And what he said was, I realized that most people just don't start. And as long as I don't, as long as I just start, I'm already light years ahead of other people. So I just have to start. And then all of the people who start, most of them give up. So as long as I just don't give up, I'm eventually going to beat almost everybody. And that is the key to success, is deciding what you want, doing it, and then going, there is no other option. This is what I'm going to do. So after three months, when you don't see success, because you probably won't, you keep going. After six months, when you don't see success, because you probably won't, you keep going. After nine months, after 12 months, after a year, after three years, after four years, it'll start to build and build and build and build and build. It's like the trees that I planted in my backyard. Before they can grow up, they've got to grow their roots down. You know, you've got to grow your knowledge and your skills and everything. That's the foundation that you're going to build everything on. Before it can grow up, it's got to grow down. You've got to put your roots down. You've got to say, this is it. I don't care what happens. Either I succeed at this or the rest of my life, I'm going to go for this. So you just don't give up. Next step, just get moving. Just keep moving. It doesn't matter how fast you go as long as you're going in the right direction. So if I were to get in my car right now, I could drive to Dallas and take about two and a half to three hours to get there. But if I were to just go on my feet and start heading in the direction of Dallas, I could walk to Dallas. And the beautiful thing about that is that as long as I was heading in the right direction, I'm eventually going to get there. It's going to take longer than it would if I took a car. I completely understand that. But the thing that I do understand is that as long as I'm heading in the right direction, it doesn't matter the speed that I'm going at, I'll eventually get there. And that is where the patience comes in. I'm going to get there one day. One day I'll be a millionaire. One day I'll have the life I want. One day I'll be able to travel the world with my family. One day I'll be able to X, Y, Z, whatever it is that you want. One day I will have it. I just have to make sure that every single morning I'm heading in the right direction. If you're heading in the wrong direction, don't get me wrong. You're not going to get what you want. That's for sure. You can't just have hard work. People are always, well, hard work. I work really hard. I said, well, you can work really hard at digging a hole in my backyard, but when you get done, I'm just going to have a hole in my backyard. There ain't going to be anything else around that. It's just a hole. So it's like you could work really hard at something that you don't want to do, but working really hard at something that you don't want to do is not going to give you the life that you want. You've got to figure out what it is that you want. You've got to work towards it, make sure that you're heading on the right path and realize that the direction that you're heading in life is more important than the speed that you're going at because you're eventually going to get there. And so that's why you've got to stop focusing on the end result. Stop focusing on that end result. Is it good to know where you're going? Absolutely. You've got to know where you're going, but don't make that the reason why you're doing it. Like if you're starting a business simply because you want to be rich, you've already lost the game. You have to enjoy the journey. You have to enjoy the growth process of getting better and learning and failing and getting better and learning and growing and failing and getting better because that is what's eventually going to get you there. If you're just focused on that end result, I promise you this, you're probably not going to get there. Or you're going to really hate your life up until you finally get there. The goal is to go, what direction am I going in? Like, I'm in Austin right now. If I were to want to go to Dallas, I'd have to head north. So as long as I wake up every single morning and I, before I start walking, I look at my, my compass and I go, okay, I'm heading north. All right, I'm just going to start walking this way. Then I wake up the next morning, I say, okay, what's my direction? Compass says I'm heading north. Okay, I'm just going to keep walking this way. As long as I'm going in the right direction north, eventually, I don't know how long it takes to walk from Austin to Dallas. It's probably a few days. Eventually, I'm going to end up there. So realize this. Be patient with what is it you want. Decide what is it you want. Burn all of the ships. Give yourself no other option. And then realize that the direction that you're heading in life is more important than the speed that you're heading at. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. What do I want in my life? Do you know where you're going? How do I want people to talk about me at my funeral? Who do I want to money? Who do I want to marry? You can marry money if you want to.